today for the first time. Um, you came on a good Sunday because we're starting a new series today called Rattled, Rattled, Rattled. What do you do when you have been rattled? What do you do when you're, when you're in a valley facing a giant? What do you do? We're going to talk about five, over the next five weeks, all the way leading up to our men's conference, we're talking about five different valleys that God will have you go through. And there is always a lesson in the valley that he wants you to learn. We're not talking about mountaintops today. We're talking about valleys. And every last one of us in life will go through valleys. Because the Bible says, in this life, you will have trouble. The question is, are you going to go through the trouble like the world goes through the trouble? Or are you going to go through the trouble like saints walk through the trouble? So that's what we're going to talk about. So let's pray. Put your seatbelts on. And here we go, everybody. Father, thank you for today. Thanks for every person under the sound of my voice, every person at every campus, every person in the hospital watching us, every person in the living room watching us, every person whipping up something to eat watching us, wherever they are today. I just pray in the name of Jesus that you will prepare every heart, remove every distraction so each of us can have a customized word to our own personal hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Will you stand to your feet and let's read the word of God. Two verses on today is all we have time for. Two verses. Let's read the end of the story and see what God has to say to us on today. Look at the person to your left. If you're in your living room uh, and you have a dog, look at your dog and say, and say you look good today. Look at the other one on the other side and say, God got a word for you today. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold it. The people of the top think I'm not talking to them. So I'm talking to you too. All right. So I need to, everybody look around at the people at the top. Everybody look around, look around. If you're online, write it in the chat. I look around and, and say, and, and just the people at the top, here's what we say. Look at them and say, God got a word for you. Look, go ahead. Okay, stop right now. Just the people of the top alone, look at your neighbor and say, God's got a word for you. Oh my gosh, y'all did it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> you know, the people up front, they're the smart ones. They always think, I want to be in the front of the class. The people at the back, they're like, listen, let me see what you got talking about. Oh, no, if I, I used to be at the back. Oh, if I trust you. Let me see if you're talking about something or if I need to get on my cell phone and get some work done. So come on, let's read the word. Uh, look at both people and say, we need to read the word. Go. We need to read the word. Come on, here we go. Thus, everybody ready? Ready, let's go. Oh, by the way, no, 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 no. Let's do a little hooked on phonics. Everybody pronounce this word for me. Philistine. Look, there you go. <laughs> Philistine, 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 Philistine. <laughs> Philistine, Philistine. Uh, I don't know which one it is. So, <laughs> so my English teachers will correct me. I know I'm going to get an email and tell them, and the little, the little, the little English uh, wizards are going to tell me which one it is. All right, and it depends on if you're in England or if you're in America. You got both of them. Anyways, for today, because you got one community, you're going to say Philistine. Okay. That English teacher down here is saying that's the right one. You done did good. Philistine. Everybody say Philistine. Philistine. You got it. No, if somebody beside you say Philistines, tap him, tap him on the shoulder. Don't slap him. Don't slap nobody. Here we go. Uh, and, and, if, and if you think the answer is Philistine, then send me an email. But today we're saying Philistine. Here we go. Thus, David prevailed over the Philistine. Somebody in here don't love Jesus. Somebody in here don't love Jesus. You're so stubborn. Philistine, Philistine, Philistine. You always got one in the crowd. You always got one. You always got one, y'all. All right, everybody, um, on if we, you will be excommunicated if you say uh, Philistine. So just point them out to me if they say, I promise you one person still going to do it. Come on, you're wasting my time. Come on, let's go. Say whatever you want to say. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Thus David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and so, and struck. 
and killed him. But there was no sword. Now, everything about this verse I like except the last phrase. What? Everything is normal. This is what my Sunday school teacher taught me. Everything is normal. But then this last phrase that starts with the conjunction, but, but there was no sword in David's hand. Why is that significant? Why did they say, okay, you killed it, but why did they say, read it again, but there was no sword in David's hand. What is the significance of the fact that there was no sword in his hands. Huh. That's why you read your Bible. Next verse. Here we go. Um, then David ran and stood over the Philistine and stuck his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut his head with it. Stop right there. That's kind of that's graphic, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. Watch what the text says. He ran and took over the Philistine and took his Huh. Huh. So that means Goliath had something David needed to accomplish his assignment. So he came to the battle without a sword, but he was going to need a sword to take him out. Now, now, if you read the whole, if you, if you had a good Sunday school teacher, she would have told you the rest of the story, which most of you don't know, because that same sword comes up again later in the text. So that means whatever battle you're facing, whatever giant you're facing, that giant has something you need for a future battle. Ma, 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 ma. So the giant you have been running away from is holding you back from your next dimension because you have to go through the giant to get what the giant has to go to your next level. Lord have mercy. You've been running from the giant for 30 years which is why you can't get to the next dimension. You're on the second floor. God's called you to the 10th floor, but you can't go to the 10th floor because you're scared of the second floor. But you got to get to the valley to fight the giant so you can get his sword so it will prepare you for your next level. Ah. But you're not there yet because you've been running from the giant for the last 10 years of your life. My God, my God, my God. Watch this now. Then he continues. And cut off his head with it. Here we go now. When the saw that their champion was dead. Huh. So that means the giant you're fighting... You're not just fighting for you. All right. You're fighting for everybody that depends on you. Yes. Yes. So I wonder which generational curse has not yet been defeated because you're still scared of your giant. I wonder what your son, your daughter, your grandson, your granddaughter is going to have to face because you don't want to fight your giant. I wonder if this thing that your kid's struggling with is because you struggled with it but didn't want to fight your giant so now they have to deal with the same giant you should have defeated. That's why you got to go to the valley. The valley of Ella. Ella. The valley of Ella. You may be seated in the house of the Lord Jesus. We're starting a new series today called Rattled, Rattled, Experiencing God in the Valley. Experiencing God in the Valley. You don't know him, but his name was Kenny Sailors. Kenny Sailors was his name. He was five foot seven. 
He lived in a house with a brother who was six feet five inches tall. Kenny loved the game of basketball. He enjoyed playing it. The problem was, over 80 years ago, he was too short to play the game. Back in the day, the game was not played like we see it today. The game was played that when these men sh uh, took a shot to the hoop, they did not ever jump. They stayed flat-footed, and they tried to make the basket. Therefore, the taller you are, the greater the advantage you had. But Kenny Sellers looked at his brother, and his brother said to him, Kenny, you probably need to try another sport because this one's not going to work out well for you, Kenny. To which Kenny then said, brother, this is the sport I love, and I know I have a weakness, but I'm going to try and see if I can come up with a way to take advantage of my weakness to get higher and taller above all of you all. So Kenny came up with something called the jump shot. Before, you would have to stay flat-footed and shoot the shot. But Kenny said, I wonder what would happen if I put this ball right over my head, jumped as high as I could, and hit the basket over the men that were so much taller than I was. You see, there would be no unique Steph Curry if it was not for Kenny Sailors. You see, there wouldn't be any LeBron James if it wasn't for what he invented or was a part of invented called the jump shot. The jump shot showed up and you enjoy the game you enjoy today because Kenny Sailors met a giant he had to overcome and his bravery then resulted in a breakthrough for so many other people. Ladies and gentlemen today, I wonder in this house if there is anybody whose bravery will result in a breakthrough for a whole generation of believers. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to submit to you today that David and his bravery led to a breakthrough for the children of Israel. For 40 days and 40 nights, a massive giant yelled at them taunted them, screamed at them, and said, why don't you come and send somebody to fight me? And because David showed up, a breakthrough took place for the children of Israel. What's fascinating about the passage that is not usually told to you is that David would have never gotten to the valley unless he passed three tests that God has laid out for every one of his followers. There are three tests you must pass before you get to even face the giant. You don't face the giant if you don't pass these three tests. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't go to your next dimension unless you pass these three tests. And God says, I came by to tell you today that he wants to take you into the valley, but you cannot get to the valley unless you pass these three tests. So the question on the floor today is, what then is a giant? Go to your sermon notes real quickly. What then is a giant? A giant is anything that opposes the purposes of God. What is it that opposes the purposes of God in your life, in your family life? What is it that opposes the call of God on your life? What is it that opposes the mission of God in your life? What is it that opposes the generational wealth in your life? What is it that opposes whatever God is trying to do in your life? You see, my main thesis is your bravery is someone else's breakthrough. Your bravery... Because of what God's going to call you to do, it is someone else's breakthrough. And if you don't act in a courageous and brave way, then somebody won't get their breakthrough. Which means you've got to step up and you've got to depend on God and show out why he allowed you the privilege to still be alive. But, 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 um, too many people run to David and Goliath, but you're going to miss who David had to be so that he could be qualified to take on Goliath. Everybody want to face Goliath and be the hero. Nobody want to do what David did to get to the privilege of facing. So three tests. Let's go through them. Look at the back of your sermon notes. You'll see them. The first number one was the ordinary test. The ordinary test. If you cannot be trusted with taking a lunch, you cannot be trusted with a giant. 
If you can't be trusted in taking a lunch to the battlefield, then you cannot be trusted with facing the giant. Here's why. Because God wants to know, can you pass the ordinary test? Can you do the mundane? Can you do the ritualistic things that you have to do every single day to get through life? The answer is most of us can't. Because we're always looking for the next big break. You're always looking for, God, what you going to do in me? Bless me now. Instead of, can you just be faithful in the little things? If you're not excellent in the little things, you won't be excellent in the big things. It takes the regular habit of being disciplined in going to work, being faithful, doing your job, making it easy for the person above you so that when they see your good deeds, they will glorify your Father who is in heaven. But when they look at our good deeds, they'll be like, I don't want to be like you. Because you're not being disciplined in the little things. The qualification for David being able to take on the giant is that when he had a hundredfold flock, all he did was took care of them. Nobody was looking at him. Nobody cared if the, if the sheep ate that day. Nobody cared when one of them left and he had to leave the 99 with the caretaker and then he had to go after the one. Nobody saw him. Nobody cared. But he was just faithful because guess who was always looking? God. You see, what David did was he, he worked for an audience of one. It didn't matter who else was looking. He knew he had to work for an audience of one and that one was God and he's all that matters. Whether he had a rainy day, whether he had a snowy day, whether he had an ugly day, it didn't matter. He was still doing the mundane, ritualistic, everyday work. My question is, are you faithful on your current job? Are you doing your best to the glory of God on your current job? Or are you doing your current job and your side gig on the, on, the, on the boss's time, so now you're ripping off the boss's time to produce your own work? What I want to know is, can you be trusted with the ordinary, or are you always working on the boss's time or on the board of directors time to do your own thing? Because if you are, then you're not qualified and you'll never get to the valley. The only people that get to the valley are the people that, that when God says do excellent in the little things, you will. I'll never forget. I just finished my doctorate degree and my spiritual asked me to clean his bathroom. And I didn't know it was a test, but that's exactly what it was. He pretended as if he didn't know I had been hooded. And he says, hey, man, you know, can you go fix that bag? I don't know what's going on, but just clean it up for me. Uh, I need to take, take, take care of business. And I was fussing and cussing in my mind, in my mind, in my mind. <laughs> Do, I, I, no, I'm going to clean it because, you know, I honor the person above me. And I'm cleaning away, cleaning away, cleaning away, but in my mind. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I just got. Can he at least celebrate me? Why ain't he celebrating me? It's my turn to be celebrated. No, I'm cleaning it now. Don't get me started. I ain't no fool now. I'm cleaning it. I'm cleaning it. But my heart ain't right as I'm cleaning it. And then I walked out of his office and he said, and he said, he said, he said, congratulations, young man. I said, for what, doc? He says, congratulations. Because now you've really graduated. Here's what he said. Here's what he said. I, I, I know you've been faithful, but I wanted to know if when you get the degree, if it's going to change anything about you. Because what I'm interested in is for you to always remember that, he, that you ain't nothing but a servant of the living God. Be careful you're not being tested by God. And be careful that you don't go buck wild crazy and get disqualified from the valley. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever they're asking you to do, all I want you to do is do it and do it well as unto the Lord. Test number one, can you pass the ordinary test? It's not about the lunch. If you're not faithful there, you can't get to the giant. Test number two is the, is the authority test. Lord have mercy. It's not about the lunch. It's about your legacy. If you can't, it, he, hey, hey, man, take this lunch down there. David thought he was just taking a lunch to his brothers to make sure they were well taken care of. From, from God's perspective, he was entering into the thing that will define him for the rest of his life. 
If you can't pass the authority test, ladies and gentlemen, you're not ready for the valley. We're not even in the valley yet. We're just talking about getting to the valley. And most of us never get there because we cannot pass the authority test. The authority test simply says this. What do you do when you disagree with what the person above you is asking you to do? What do you do? It's not unbiblical. You just think it ain't right, so you don't want to do it. What do you do when the authority test show up? Let me explain something to you why the authority test is important. Because David now shows up, and he could have said to his dad, Dad, do you know who I am? I'm anointed. I'm going to be the next king. I'm not no Uber Eats carrier. That ain't who I am. Let one of your other sons do that. I'm taking care of them sheep right here, and I'm trying to make sure them sheep are well taken care of. You let somebody else do it. I ain't no errand boy. Or he could have contorted his face. And he could have said, <laughs> and he could have acted buckwild crazy. But because he did not honor the authority, then he would not have been invited to the valley. Can I ask you this? What would your employees say about you? Would they say that you honor them as you're making God look good as their boss? What would your boss say about you? What would your CEO say about you, you executive senior VP? Would they say, would they say, would they say that you honor up or would they say you're only doing it for your bonus? Would they say it is your disposition to honor up? Or would they say you, you, you buck wild, but you're doing it because you know if you don't, you're not going to get the paycheck at the end of the season or the period, whatever period that is. You see, let me tell you why this is important. This is important because you attract who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if you ain't a good follower, you're going to attract people who are not good followers. So when you get to be over, the people that follow you are going to be just like you were when you were under. So therefore, if you, if, 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 if you talk about the boss, when you get to be over, they're going to talk about you. Ah, that's for somebody up here. You're talking too much on your job. You're talking too much. Hey, can you believe? I can't believe. They are, rah, 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 rah. Guess what's going to happen when God elevates you? You're going to have some people that say, rah, rah, rah. And you're going to come to church and say, Lord, why is it these people are so wicked? And the answer is going to be because you were wicked. It's a test. You don't even get to even think about going to your next dimension until the authority issue has been settled. Gentlemen, don't ask your wife to submit to you when you don't submit to God. Ladies, don't talk about, you need to obey me, kids. You need to follow me, kid. Why are your head so tough? Look in the mirror. Maybe you ain't honoring up either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I look like I need to stay here a little longer, huh? Don't move on, Pastor. Stay right here. Some, some, some of the men be like, see you, Pastor, see you. If you want to get over those God wants under you, then you have to get under those he's placed over you. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy where God has planted you. Yes. Get you there is nothing, there is no way you can't thrive because you're not working for the person above you. You're working for the Lord. Yes. If you get that settled, then you watch doors open up to take you to the next level. Maybe you're not in the valley yet because you don't know how to honor up. Look at the person next to you and say, honor. no, no, not your spouse. Look at somebody else and say, honor up, honor up, honor up, honor up. <laughs> the last test, watch this one. Watch this one. The last test is, it's called, now you got to face the real enemy test. Now listen, if you pass the first two, this one oftentimes gets us. The last, en the real enemy test says this. David shows up right before the battle, but he's not there yet. And uh, his brother, Eliab, 
shows up. And his brother says, what you doing here? You don't belong here. What you doing here? Just give me this food and go back home. Run back home. Who taking care of them sheep? I know he didn't even leave nobody to take care of them sheep. The flock be scattered all over. What you doing? Get back over there and take care of them little sheep you got. No, he has a choice. He can fight his brother and miss the real enemy. He can make his brother the enemy and miss the real enemy that God sent him to fight. And let me help you now. Everybody need a list of this. Here's the test. The test is um, don't get distracted by the preliminary battle and miss the ultimate battle. Too many of us get distracted by preliminary battles. Some of you got people in your life right now that you're fighting with, that you have no business fighting with, but you fight with them and the enemy threw them up so they can be a distraction for you. So you stay away from your Goliath because he have you busy fighting this little battle that has no eternal ramifications. There's some of you that's still fighting somebody on the inside because somebody says something bad about you and now you're fighting them. I can't be, well, I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them. And they, all the devil used, all the devil did was bring somebody to highlight your insecurity. And now all of a sudden, you far away from the valley that God called you to go to. Listen to me, family. Some of you are still fighting your third grade teacher. You 65 year old, find your third grade teacher. Well, she said I wasn't gonna make it. So you better believe I'm gonna show her. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. And God said, who, who told you to fight what you I told you who you are. You don't have to get it from no third grade teacher. Some of you fighting your spouse. And instead of seeing that, what the devil does is he is highlighting the flaws of your spouse so you can get distracted with her or with him instead of seeing that God's called you to such a bigger purpose. But in order to get there, you have to realize that you are not fighting each other, you're fighting a common enemy. There's some of you at work. And you fight the last person that betrayed you. I can't believe they still mean the bet. Well, you better believe I'm going to show them who I'm made of. I'm going to show them who I'm made of. And so all of a sudden, all your energies are not going to what God's called you to. It's going to show somebody something. What's wrong with you? Take the knife out of your back, throw it on the ground, go to the doctor, get well, and then go after what God's called you to do. Quit trying to find the Judases in your life. They're there to keep you prayed up. Stay prayed up and go fight the real battle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good God Almighty. There's some of you still yet that are fighting battles God never intended you to fight. Yeah. You got fired from your last job and you think it's not fair. So you're going to call down 18 lawyers and you're going to call down 10. To, you go call everybody. Hey, did you feel this way when they did? Did you feel this way? 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 And you're going down trying to, and they say, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Mm -mm, not me. I didn't. And like, yeah, you I saw it. I saw it. And you're trying to convince the person who told you that they didn't feel that way. But because you have this venom inside of you, the devil don't have to work on you because you're at some other battlefield fighting a little battle that have no far-reaching ramifications. None. But you're losing your good mind on a wrong battle. My God in heaven. If that's you, just wave your hand. Don't do it. Don't just <laughs> wave your hand. God just brought somebody right inside that in front of you. You're fighting. Some of you fighting your ex. Let it simmer a little. Let it simmer. <laughs> you still trying to show him or her that you fine and they miss out on you. And if they had only stayed with you, let me show you what you missing. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Move on. God's got purpose for you. Quit trying to impress somebody that could not care less about you and don't ever think about you either. Oh, I'm this side quiet. Hold on. <laughs> Only one person over here yelling and screaming. Everybody else quiet. Oh, God. What's he doing today? I brought a guest. Just be nice. 
Timothy 3, test everybody. Test number one is? Test number two is? Test number three is? No, let me help you. Make sure your kids, including your grown kids, learn these three. But the only way they're going to learn it is if you pass it. Model it first before you tell them what to do. By the way, let me, let me, parenthetical thought, let me tell you something else. In the ordinary test, sometimes too many of us are trying to do the big things with our kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We finna go in a battle when he turns 15. And we gonna, we gonna fight an animal. And I'm gonna make him a warrior. <laughs> Joker, calm down. It's one, first of all, they don't even want to spend that much time with you no more. It's not one, one event at a time. It's one, one, one three sentence conversation at a time. So spend the quality time every day. The ordinary time every day. And don't, don't wait for these giant amazing experiences to think that's going to shift everything. It would have been too late. Because he wanted the daily conversation, not the every six month experience. That since God done bless you with a little bit of change, now you think, oh yeah, let's go to Disney together. <laughs> oh yeah, let me just, when we get to Disney, we'll have great family time. Hey, hey, hey! Every single day, regular conversation, ordinary conversation, fight the good fight. Come on, somebody, can I get a witness? All right, let's go. Come on, now I got to get through this. So, 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 that, that's how you get in the battle. So now, now you're in the valley. Now God says, all right, let's get him in the valley. Let's get him in the valley. Now you're in the valley. And now you're like, okay, God, I was, you know, I did the ordinary. Thanks for qualifying me. Now, God, I, I, you know, I did my best, God, and, and I, fought, I, 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 didn't, I didn't get distracted by my brother, so I want to see who the real enemy is. And now you're in the valley, in the valley of Elah. And now you, know, you, you did the authority test and you pass it. So now your question is, what am I about to face in this valley? Behind the valley, behind the giant? Is your next opportunity. Will you defeat the giant that you see? In order to do that, let's see six principles and then we'll get out of here. Principle number one. Number one, this is huge. You've got to make sure you never get comfortable with other people's dysfunction. You've got to make sure you, for 40 days, this knucklehead Goliath is talking to the people of Israel and he's saying, come fight me. Come fight me. Who, who is Saul? Come fight me. I will kill all of y'all. For 40 days and 40 nights. They've gotten so used to it, they're now afraid and they're dismayed. And so now, nobody, hey man, now he ups the ante. Hey man, listen, listen, listen. listen. All right, if you go to fight, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bless your kids. I'm going to give you a million dollars per kid if you go fight. And then we're going to give you this island right off of San Diego. And we're going to bless you with it if you go fight. Nobody still fought. Why? Why? Because he's using the physical to fight the physical. So now they're in dysfunction and everybody is afraid. You ever go to your family reunion? No, you come to church and you're loving Jesus. Then you go to the family reunion. And since everybody drinking and going buck wild, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember the back in the day when we used to do this. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Don't join their dysfunction. You remember back in the day? Oh, yeah, man. Here go my old, my old thing. Uh-huh. Oh, look at her now. Oh, yeah, that's my girl right there. You to me. Hey, 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 hey. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Don't join their dysfunction. You remember when they used to gamble back then? Don't join their dysfunction. You go to the family reunion and you don't lose your mind because you've gone back to where you used to be. Be careful that you don't join their dysfunction. They live for stuff you don't live for no more. Don't join their dysfunction. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, don't join their dysfunction. Look at the other one. Godly person, don't join their mess. 
My God, my God, my God, my God. Don't do it. Because what David had to do was when David heard the cry of this Goliath taunting the children of Israel. Are y'all hearing what I'm hearing? This uncircumcised Philistine be talking to y'all like that and this all y'all do? Y'all just listen to him and say, okay, how much money is this? I give you 20, I give you 100, let's go. David said, oh, 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 no, no. Up until that point, they only saw themselves as a physical army. What David saw himself as, he said, you can't talk to the army of the living God like that. Well, what was so different with David? Go to the next thought. Here's the next thought, because this impacts some of us too. Saul said to him, David, David, hey, okay, I know you're getting all excited. You think they're dysfunctional, so I know you're getting excited. So, David, here's what I want you to do. You, 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 you just a little boy. That's all you are, David, a little boy. You're not ready for this valley yet. To which, to which David said, no, 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 no. Here's my resume. Um, God gave me a flock to take care of. And the flock he gave me to take care of, a lion showed up to hurt the flock. And I said, lion, you don't know who you're messing with. This is God's flock. He's asked me to take care of it. So let me come here. Let me teach you a little lesson. And by the way, I'm going to cut off a little bit of your lock because I'm going to use it as a testimony. It's hanging up in my bathroom. So every time I have another enemy that show up, I remember what God allowed me to do with you. That's why I have a piece of your lock here to always remember that. Because my job is to take care of the flock. Then a bear showed up. And David said, bear, go to somewhere. You don't, don't mess over here. You're going to be all right. The bear said, uh-uh, I'm going to get one of them. And so David said, all right, you asked for it. So David go, he wrestles the bear, he kills the bear. Then he makes a, a, a bear mat for his hallway when you walk into his house. He's got a bear mat with the bear on there, so he walks over the mat. Now, the reason he's walking over the mat when he gets to his house is so that the next challenge, when it show up, he's going to remember, I, I have a piece of lock in my bathroom. I have the bear mat that I walk into every day. So if you challenge God's flock, I'm going to take you out like I did the lion and like I did the bear. So Saul, I know you're saying I am too. And I know for many of us, we get plagued by the same thing. You're too short. You're not light skin enough. You didn't graduate high school. Or you don't have a college degree. Or your, your, your credit score is 500. Can you, is that a number? <laughs> I don't know what credit. Anyways, it's five, let's say it's 500. Your credit score is 500. Do you go down to 400? Do you have 400? I don't know. Anyways, your credit score is low. You can't get no money from that. So therefore, you believe the report of the enemy or you believe the report of the person who's discouraging you. So all of a sudden now, instead of walking in who God's called you to be, God says, I sent you into that valley. Who should I say sent me? Tell them I am sent me into this valley to take on this uncircumcised Philistine. Number three. Check it out. Number three says this. What you believe will always overcome what you see. Jesus, what you believe will always overcome what you see. What you believe will always overcome what you see. See, when this, when this army saw the giant, they saw a nine foot tall giant and they got terrified. And so whenever they heard Goliath taunt them, they, they, they got real nervous. So what they decided to do was they decided to run. When David showed up, David says, you got to remember now, I have a covenant with God. So since I have a covenant with God, let me remind you of what I had to do. When I have a covenant with God, what I had to do was I had to remember that um, when the lion came, I was under the covenant. That's why I beat him. When the, lion, when the bear came to take the flock, I was under the covenant. That's why I took him out. So when I'm under the covenant, watch this now. When I'm under the covenant, 
I can't even see Goliath's head. I can't because I'm under the covenant. All I can see, watch this now, all I can see is right here. And all I see is an uncircumcised finish time. So since I'm a part of the army of God, and since he's threatening the flock of God, I'm going to take you out, you fool, because I am under the covering of God. My God, my God, my God, my God. My God. Now here's your problem. Your problem is you have the covering, but you ain't under it. That's why you only see in the physical. You don't see in the physical, in the spiritual, because you have the covering. Live under the covenant so when the giant show up, I can take the giant down. She talking about bye. <laughs> hey, come on, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Uh, all the other services were so polite and nice. I didn't have to linger on any point. Calm down now. Let's get through these. I got three more. Come on, there we go. Next one. Watch this. The challenge in front of you is an indication of the power within you. Let me tell you what it means. The challenge Goliath in front of you is an indication that because he's in front of you, God has already set you up with everything you need to overcome that giant. Your only assignment is to see what God sees. Ah, some of you are still not feeling me. Um, in my household, my son um, has these things that he puts in his mouth, and, um, and he has a tendency to lose them. Um, my, my wife always tells him, hey, buddy, make sure you put it in the case. And then when you, when you take it out, take it out, put it in your mouth. And make sure, because, because I need you to make sure you, can, you, can, you know where they are at all times. So one day they got lost. And this is probably the fourth time they got lost. So then my wife, Jada, says, hey, man, go look for this thing. So he went to look for it. 30 minutes later, mom, I just can't find it. So Jada said, so you know what? Let me go look for my own. So, go look. so she goes to this and she looks. And she finds it in about four minutes. So then he had a philosophical question to ask. He says, Mom, what's the difference why you found it so quickly and I did not? <laughs> to which she eloquently reminded him, you are looking for your mouthpiece. I am looking for $300. <laughs> When the soldiers asked David, David, what do you see? An uncircumcised Philistine. Come on, make soldiers, what do you see? A nine foot giant with a 200 pound garb all over him. It's all based on what you see. That's it. David knew something. You're coming after God's flock. Joker, you don't mess with Yahweh. You ain't nothing but an uncircumcised. But get the heck up out of here. I'm going to take you down so easy because I've been doing this in practice when I've been practicing in the ordinary. Ladies and gentlemen, number five, watch this now. Number five says, watch it. The, move, the, the moment is never just about your story. It's always about a bigger story. Always about a bigger story. Ladies and gentlemen, um, You've got everything you need to take on your giant, and you must always remember that it's never just about you. Yeah. Today is all Jada's stories. Jada called me the other day, hey, 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 honey, whenever I'm in trouble and something needs fixed, she says, Mr. Leader. So she says, uh, Mr. Leader, the trash is stink, and the garage won't open. There is no power to the garage. To which I said, okay. So I've now had a rhythm after 20, 22 years. So I said, sweetie, um, I got a guy. 
So let me call my guy. And my guy will show up. So my guy came over, and I said, hey, man, don't talk to JJ, just talk to me. All right. <laughs> so he called, hey, I got to go, for real. Um, so he calls, and he said, hey, he said, you, don't, you, you don't have a power problem. What you have is an alignment problem. He says, because at your, at your, with your garage, bro, you got these two cylinders that they got to be in alignment for them to create the power so that the garage door can go up. So he says what happened was, uh, he didn't say this, but I'm making up the story. He says, one of your bad kids kicked, <laughs> kicked one of these cylinders and it was no longer in alignment. So therefore you lack the power because there was no alignment. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you that the reason you can't defeat your Goliath is not because you don't have power, but it's because you're not in alignment with his word. If you get in alignment with his word, then you have all the power to take down that giant. But because of your bad behavior, there is no alignment, so no God has to bring you back in alignment to take on the giants in your life. Lord have mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Your kids are dependent on you to be in alignment. Your family is dependent on you to be in alignment. Your grandkids are dependent on you to be in alignment. Your mom is dependent on you to be in alignment. Because once you're in alignment, the power flows. All right, I got to go, 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 I got to go. The last one says this. The last one says, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me, please. The last one says this. It says that the sword that comes to kill you is the sword that God will use to deliver you. Lord have mercy. You thought he was an Uber Eats carrier, and you thought he was the delivery boy taking the lunch to the men. But what the text shows us is that, no, no, no. Actually, David wasn't the delivery boy. Goliath was the delivery boy because he had to bring a delivery to David so that David could get his sword, take him out, so that David could then get ready for his next battle. So you see, if you don't take your giant out, then you don't have the weaponry needed to take on your next foe. We have too many people in here that's trying to go to the other battle when you have not yet finished this battle. Why are you trying to go to the 10th floor when you don't want to stop on the second floor? You see, what you don't know about the text is that um, when he got the head and he got the sword, the reason he got both of them and walked off of them is because he said, hey man, look at here. I got my lion, I got my bear, and I got my head. Now, our members who are... Um, a little darker skin don't know nothing about this. But our members who are lighter skin know a lot about this. <clears throat> um, my lightest, or one community church's lighter skin members know about whenever you go to one of their cabins, they're not going to do it in their house for the most part, one of their cabins. For real, I've been to a couple of y'all's members of this church, their cabins. And when you go, they have deer heads <clears throat> from New Zealand, Australia, Africa, Canada, and every one of them have a story. Every one of them. And they can just tell you, I'm, I'm going to get an email about this, I know I am. Um, and they can just tell you about, I don't have any. I just tell you about all the stories they have. Here's why. Because they want you to know that in their past, they conquered one of those animals. Yeah. Now let me help you out. Whatever your next assignment is, you need to have some testimonies yeah. that reminds you of the goodness of God yeah. in your last season to help you take on the new enemy in the new season. Last thing, last thing, I'm not done. Last thing, last thing, last thing. Do you know why he needed that sword? Because the text says, 
he sent that sword to the temple. And the sword went to the temple. And David never thought he'd ever need it. Until he was running away from Saul. So he's running away from Saul, and he wonders, I don't have anything in me. I don't know what to do. I can't defend myself. And he's wondering, what am I going to do to defend myself? So he goes to Elimelech and says, hey, man, do you have any weapons? To which Elimelech says, yeah, yeah, I only have the weapon that you gave after you defeated Goliath. So he brought it out to him. And the weapon that David used to defend himself was the one he took from the giant called Goliath. And while he would never kill Saul, it was there as a defense for any other enemy. Let me remind you of something. Whatever purpose God has called you to fulfill, you must get from the giant what it has for you to take on the next enemy yeah. in the new dimension. Yeah. You don't pass that test. You don't get to fulfill the call on your life. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm done. Here's all I want you to do now. I want you to think of your giant that you must defeat. Look at your paper. Don't look at nobody else around you. And all I want you to do is circle the giant you must defeat. That's it. And then we're done. No, you're not walking out today unless you circle your giant. What's the giant that you must defeat? What is it that the enemy is using against you? What's hindering you from the purposes of God on your life? What's hindering you from the legacy he wants you to fulfill? What's hindering you from the call on your life? What's the battle you must fight to get the victory, to set your family up for the rest of their lives? What is that for you? This is not the time to get up and walk. This is the time to reflect on the battle you must fight and the giant you must topple for the glory of God. We're going to sing a song. And I want you to, when you, when you have considered and made a commitment to God, I want you, when you finish, I want you to join the song. When you circle it, when you pray and make that commitment, then I want you to finish and I want you to circle it, then I want you to stand. Take it away. see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord you're gonna see a victory you're gonna see your victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. You're gonna see the victory. You're gonna see the victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Because you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I've seen it, I've seen it. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Lift your voice and say, you take, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see the victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see the victory. I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I ask now that you will empower every person under the sound of my voice, that you'll give us courage more than we've ever had before, boldness more than we've ever had before, 
the desire to fight the battle against this giant more than we've ever had before. Remind us, God, of how high the stakes are. Remind us that if we leave the battle, if we leave this giant up, he's going to torment other people because we didn't take the giant down. So God, whatever this giant is, whether it's addiction, whether it's a lack of self-control, whether it is some form of relational trauma, whatever that battle is, whatever that giant is, whether it's a fear to attack the calling you have in our lives, whether it's humility, whether it's pride, whatever it is, will you help us, every last one of us, every person under the sound of my voice, to fight the giant in front of us because you've given us the power to overcome it because we're under the covenant of the living God. Give us courage and anoint us again today. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said? You may be seated. Come on, let's clap that up, everybody. Let's clap that up.